So one of the things that will help you, I think, with your show is to stay abreast of what is culturally current, keeping your cultural references up to date, keeping track of what is popular in popular culture. This is something that I've seen some stage hypnotists can get pretty comfortable in a bad way and let their stuff get old. Everything changes so much faster now. Music, TV shows, movies, everything split more. I would say it's a bigger challenge now than it's ever been. But again, for what we do, it's it's not hard. It's not rocket science. You just have to put in the work. But I'll show you how I do it. So working in the college market primarily and also with high schools, I work with a lot of younger people and they're very attuned to what's hot now that was not hot uh, a month ago. I tend to think in terms of semesters. I think fall semester, spring semester. And I make sure that a couple of times each semester, I'm going and checking on things. So let's look at music first. The easiest resource to keep up on music is the Billboard Hot 100. Billboard used to be a magazine. They still are an organization. You used to have to literally buy the magazine and they'd give you the rankings. But now you can just go to their website and you can look at what are the top 100 singles in popular in music right now. They even show you what's going up and what's going down. You can see the little arrows here. So you can get on Billboard Hot 100 and you can see what music is trending the other thing you can do that I do do occasionally is a lot of people still go and buy their music from iTunes. And when you go to the iTunes app, they show you a top 10 list of what top, the top 10 songs are that are being purchased at any moment of the day. You know, they show you what's the hottest stuff. So that's another thing. And, and you can expand it beyond the top 10. You can do a see more. There's a little see more button. And they'll show you like the top 100 songs that are being sold on iTunes right now. Same idea, right? Tiny little hint when you are checking the music, when you're ready to purchase music and use it for your show, make sure you pick the clean version, not the explicit version. But this is the easiest thing. And if you're doing any kind of, I have two shows, right? I have a pop culture show and I have a nostalgia show. So my nostalgia show, I'm purposely looking for stuff that is older and I drill down to specific like, like six to probably six to eight year sets of time for that. And so when I figure out what those years are, the other thing you can do is you can just Google, let's say you were looking for, you know, what was really cool 10 years ago in 2013, you can do the 2013 billboard top 100 and all of that is archived, see? And that will that will pull up too. They, they keep it all on Wikipedia. So you can pull up what was the top 100 and you can find what were the hottest things in that year. And so that's a great way to do older research as well. Same idea, top grossing movies of... 2023, right? So far, what's your top stuff? If it's the top grossing, then the most people are seeing it. If the most people are seeing it, then you have a better chance of them connecting to the content in your show, right? So right now, the top grossing movie of 2023 is the Super Mario Brothers movie, then Avatar, Ant-Man and the Wasp, John Wick, Creed 3, Puss in Boots, Scream 6, Megan, Dungeons and Dragons, Cocaine Bear. Damn, that'd be an interesting thing to work into a show. There's your top 10, right? And so if you're going to update um, and make some movie references, create some scenarios that maybe refer to popular movies, you know, really probably anything in the top, maybe you could even argue 20, but I would say definitely in the top 15. But look at the difference here. I mean, you know, a movie that Super Mario Brothers is doing 490 million in the United States this year versus when you get down toward 15, 44 million. It's a pretty big difference. So it tells you there's a pretty big difference in attendance as well. Streaming changes things now. You know, we don't just look at 
theater tickets, right? Theater seats. You got to think about eventually um, they'll stream it, but right now they're not streaming it because they can't. So this really is like the most current thing right now would be people who are actually taking the time to go to the movie theaters and watch this stuff live. So I would look at stuff in the top 15. You might have to do a little research. Like I haven't even heard of, let's see, Jesus Revolution. I don't know what that is. All the others I've pretty much heard of, but I haven't seen them necessarily. I don't really understand them. So you have to do a little bit of research and find out what are they about? What are the characters? What's the general idea of the plot? Can you take those and get them to fit into, you know, a safe and entertaining skit in your show? So that's movies. This is where it's gotten really hard. It used to be so much easier with TV most po popular TV shows of 2023. Right, so Rotten Tomatoes is probably the leading tracking place for this now. They really do a good job of tracking what critics say versus what fans say. This is what they're coming up with. See now like this, like Kunk on Earth sees, I don't even know what that is, but they're saying it's n number one. Um, Happy Valley, Poker Face, Barry, Beef, Succession, Schmigadoon, right? And there's your top 10. And again, you can go beyond top 10. The challenge with TV shows now is there are so many platforms, so many offerings that it's really difficult to work a TV show into your stage show that a real sizable amount of the audience is going to be familiar with. TV is so diversified now. So many people are watching so many different things. What you probably want to look for when you look through a list like this is see now like Ted Lasso season three is ranked number 22. But Ted Lasso was such a phenomenon for seasons one and two that it's almost like you treat it based on the whole three years and you think it was a wildly popular show. The Mandalorian, similar, right? Season three, you go, yeah, but season one and two got huge amounts of attention. So you can leverage that greater presence than just the latest season and probably get more people in the audience to resonate with it. So if I was going to pick anything, and I probably will, you know, for an update to my show, I would go with Ted Lasso, even though it's coming in at number 22 on Rotten Tomatoes. This other stuff, you know, season one, yeah, it's popular, but is it really wildly popular? No, no. Like a lot of this stuff, right? It's just not, it's just, it, I'm sure it's getting good attention right now, but it's not a phenomenal presence like a show like Ted Lasso is. Last of Us would probably be the one that they've only been in their first season and it got so much attention and it's got a 96% rating, right? Like that I'd go, okay, I might try to work in a Last of Us skit somehow. Marvelous Mrs. Maisel with five seasons and it's still coming in at number nine. I'd give that some consideration. But this is how I do it. This is what I do. I, I pull. So what you're really trying to do is these are all, to, this looks like it's just a web page with a ranking, but you have to keep in mind, it's all based on data. It's based on gross ticket receipts or number of streams or number of downloads for music files or there's some kind of data that these sites are using to drive their rankings. It's not just a raw human opinion. It's data-driven ranking. And so that's where you go, all right, well, if there's data behind it, it means that it's actually being consumed at a bigger level. And if it's being consumed more, then there's a better chance that you're going to create it. If you use it in your show, it's gonna resonate with more people because of the scale at which it's being consumed. So we talked about movies, TV shows, music. Those are the big three. Those are those are the big three. And as you see, really fast, easy searches, right? Billboard, Hot 100, Rotten Tomatoes, 
and Wikipedia might have some of that stuff too, but that's pretty much it. Then you take that stuff and then you get into the harder part. The more challenging part is, okay, how do I create a scene or a scenario or a skit that uses that music, that uses those characters from that TV show or that uses characters from the movie that is hypnotically interesting and comedically entertaining for the audience.